Okay, so thank you very much. I'm going to start just by talking about what does the brain bank do. Um, we do what it says on the tin. We are a bank of human post-mortem tissue. Um, obviously, we want to collect and, importantly, provide that tissue to neuroscience research. To do that, we need to facilitate, and that often does encompass quite a lot of liaison with quite a lot of different parties, and encourage brain donation. Everything we do is regulated by the Human Tissue Authority, and we work via what's called informed consent. So this is obviously a big decision for people to make. They need time to uh, discuss it with their families, get all the information they need about what ha actually happens at the time. As you might know, a lot of these diseases, the only definitive way to say this is definitely Alzheimer's or actually this is Lewy body dementia, frontotemporal dementia, is to look at that tissue under the microscope to see what is changing within the brain cells. So we need to do a full neuropathological diagnosis in order to use the tissue in the best way. And actually, we can provide that diagnosis back to the family. And a lot of families say that's really important to them. Um, these are just examples of um, the, the top is a, a control case, um, and the bottom is a donation from someone with severe Alzheimer's disease. Hopefully, you can see the difference in, in the structure of those brains. We enable collaboration, we hope, between the basic research scientists, so the people using this tissue on the bench to investigate their particular ideas, the pathologists who are seeing the end stage of these diseases, and the clinicians who are understanding what's, what's actually happening in the patient's life, what are the symptoms and the problems that they are having. We also do um, a lot of teaching. We uh, do a lot of demonstration sessions, neuroanatomy and neuropathology for numerous MSE courses, for trainee medics, for trainee pathologists, and we are a research uh, lab in our own right. So why do we need brain tissue? Why do we still collect it? So there's still a huge amount that we need to learn, even in the commonly known disorders. So this is Augusta D. She was Alzheimer's first patient that he described over 100 years ago now. But we still don't understand a lot about Alzheimer's disease. Why does it develop? Why do some people have a fast progression, some people slow? And as the population ages, we're going to see rare disorders become more common. We may even see disorders, you know, new disorders emerging. So it's really important we keep collecting tissue. We want to examine changes in the brain that lead to the memory loss, the neurological problems, the psychiatric issues. And we need to do that in human brains. These are human diseases and animal models all have their limitations. To do all this, there's a real need for us to collect tissue from what we call healthy control people, so someone who has died of something else where they haven't had any um, disease to the brain. The tissue that we're collecting at the moment is being used in large-scale genetic studies, so to look for sort of rare causes of these diseases, to look for predisposing risk factors, um, we're looking in cohort groups, so people who are also having assessments during their life, maybe MRI scans, maybe blood samples. So we've got really good clinical, longitudinal clinical information that can go alongside that pathological end stage um, analysis that we do. Obviously, we're involved in studies looking at biomarkers. The brain is hard to get to, and we do have to, to wait for post-mortem. If we can find something in the blood, the CSF, even in the saliva, that can act as a biomarker, a reliable, accurate reflection of what's going on in the brain, that will really change the way we do research, where we do drug trials, and how we can sort of monitor the progression of these diseases. And obviously, as drug trials come through, what we want to do is to really understand the effects of any of those therapies, not just on the clinical um, presentation, but what's actually happening to the brain tissue, to the disease in the brain. So within the brain bank, we have over 3,000 donated cases already. Um, they're not just all dementia. We've got lots of different diseases. Um, we have, in most cases, we have fixed tissue available if you want to do immunohistochemistry, or we've got frozen tissue if you want to extract DNA, RNA, protein. Um, we've given out over 80,000 samples in the last five years to 250 projects. Um, we are looking at the moment at cell culture from post-mortem tissue. We're also very nearly there with ethics to actually collect surgical tissue from living patients. So if anyone's got any ideas, wants to know a bit more about tissue banking and what we can provide, please do get in touch. Thank you.